Right, so the talk is about geographic computation and visualization. Uh, somewhat of a shortener to geographic computation, but I will talk also about visualization. So my name is Bjorn Zimmermann. I am Wolfram Alpha Scientific Content Manager. So uh, this means I represent another branch of the Wolfram family. Uh, in Wolfram Alpha, we have maps since, uh, since launch in 2009. And uh, at felt time, this makes us actually also available for external users. That's why we made this an initiative for uh, our latest product where we have uh, now the capabilities to create very nicely and easily maps. So where are we found, can be found, right? We are here in the documentation center. We have a geographic data and computation. And I uh, mostly will cover, hopefully, if time allows, if time allows, you can easily read it up later on maps and cartography, geographic data and entities, and geodatic computations. And uh, I probably have no time to talk about this thing here. So essentials, what do we need to do, uh, do very flexible geographic maps? Well, we have to have something like graphics. Uh, graphics is a very powerful part of the Wolfram language, and it's very po uh, it, is, it can be used in very, very many ways. And uh, one way was we decided to use it now for our geographic visualization. And the Wolfram language, we have also geodetic computation. We have geodetic computations in the Wolfram language since version 7. So we can already build on that. We, we, have, we don't have to start from scratch. And with the new version of, Wolfram, of the Wolfram products, the external users also have access to the Wolfram knowledge base. This means they have access to a lot of entities, which uh, we will use because a lot of entities which we have in Alpha, they have as positions associated to them, polygons associated to them. So we can easily use this now for uh, geographic uh, visualizations. In the Wolfram knowledge base, we have street map tiles. Uh, and we have available elevation data. Geodetic computations. Uh, there are many ways to modeling the Earth. Uh, depending on what uh, approximation it's uh, uh, um, accessible for you or what you actually want, you can choose one of those. Uh, what they all have in common is that they are describing position of the Earth in latitude and longitude. So the head for marking Coordinates in the Wolfram language is geoposition. Um, as you may have noticed, we switched uh, also some of the regular packlets, for instance, country data. They, they uh, turn now polygons in geoposition. This is very nice because now this means we, we treat things now in a, a uniform way. Entity value gives you uh, uh, polygons in geoposition. The, the, the shipping packlet also gives you things wrapped in geoposition. Geoposition, as I said, we have latitude and longitude. Uh, before it was always the other way around because longitude, latitude, because you can easily plot it in graphics. It means graphics also had to learn about geoposition, which it does now in the latest uh, version of our products. Since we are now uh, promoting geoposition, we have to uh, we have to expand geoposition. So geoposition ex uh, accept now arrays as arguments. It can auto convert input. It has uh, supported now more input forms. It supports now quantities, which we introduced in the last version of Mathematica. To, for external users, We're using them uh, since launch also in Wolfram Alpha. You can also use now DMS strings in geoposition, or you can geotag images. If you have geotag images, you can easily extract the information on where the image was taken. That's information which is in, meta info, in, in the metadata information of your image. Uh, there's also geoposition. There are some varieties which we some varieties which we also expanded accordingly. Geoprojection data. Again, geoprojection data is for quite some while available for external user in the Wolfram language. We did made uh, various tweaks. We added uh, two new projections and many more are coming. Geodisplacement. Uh, geodisplacement is very convenient to describe roads, uh, routes or courses. Before you could use, for instance, geodistance, position, position one, and position two. Now you can say, uh, give me the geodistance between the position and the bearing, which means you go in a certain direction for a certain, uh, certain distance. This you can now easily describe in geodisplacement. Again, there are very varieties. You can easily check. We have very nice documentation, which we also updated quite a bit for our latest release. Geodistance. Geodistance was in before. We again expanded it. It supports no entities. It supports the distance functions. Uh, you can imagine you have two polygons, and you want to know the nearest uh, position between these two polygons or the nearest position between the center of the polygons. All these things you can easily specify now, which you can imagine they often are quite different. And as we do in alpha, 
many of these uh, geo-aware functions uh, support now a unit system. So if you are used to, if you are, if your GIP indicates that you are in a country with, uh, where the metric system is used, you will probably serve it in meters. Otherwise, you will get um, you will get uh, imperial units like uh, miles. We introduced our geo distance for extended for extended entities. For instance, geo nearest give me all countries which are from uh, within this 100 miles, uh, 100 kilometers of Germany. You get something like this. Geo identify, give me all the polygons where my current geo position right here is empty. Uh, where I'm part of, where you have time zones, all kind of different time zones. You get, uh, in this case, you can see we have uh, polygons for a lot of for a lot of entities. Geo within Q is uh, New York City within the United States. Yes, it is. Or for instance, geo entities, we can say which kind of buildings you know about uh, which are in New Orleans. For instance, you can choose whatever you like. Uh, geographic visualization. Um, one has to be aware that geographics deals with coordinates on two layers. That means before and after the projection. So this means we had to expand the graphics, um, what you're used, the options you're used to graphics to uh, make a geo uh, alternative for it. For it. Once you can say now easy geo position here, and then you get right here in Champagne. So we get uh, some, some nice area on Champagne. We have some, you have some uh, notion about where you are. You can click on it, you can click on period, and you can see, you can easily see latitude and longitude where actually are certain positions. You can easily map those. You can click on those, you copy paste those, and you have already positions we can use for, for instance, aligning different maps. I think this is nicely covered in the documentation. Uh, most of the options are automatic. Once we evaluate it, we try to make, make, uh, get sensible results. If you want to know these or want to use them further, you can look at the options. You can find a lot of information on which, uh, um, your, to which settings actually your automatic uh, setting was translated to. For instance, here we usually say we have some meta information. Of course, we had to annotate things. Or you can say that a projection, we use now a Mercator projection, which is very common in, in these kind of things uh, for maps of, of small areas. I, said, I, I do not have time to talk about uh, all these options here. So how much time do I have? <laughs> OK. Uh, so I, I, if you get the notebook, I you will find very nice descriptions. Um, again, we, we, we wrote very nice documentation, hopefully, which we think is very nice. Hopefully, you, you feel the same. Geo zoom level. So what, what kind of data do we have, actually have now available? As I said, we have, uh, you can, you can we, we have uh, our street map tiles we have from the whole world, the whole world geo uh, zoom level one up to the very local location, up to zoom level 18. And you can see uh, the system tries to show a, a sensible geo range that the, you see a lot of details for the range you have chosen, and uh, it's, it's kind of sensible. You can do the same now for elevation data. As I said, we have for elevation data, we have up to eight at the moment. We are working, or we have already, uh, it's in the progress to add uh, higher resolution elevation data maps. This is coming, uh, just, just not quite made it into this version. But again, it's, uh, this is background on the Wolfram Alpha side. So in this case, we, we can easily uh, maybe even push these things without having releasing a new version of Mathematica. Set geo projection. We have a lot of geo projections. Uh, OK, I don't have to scroll here. There are, and there are many, many more coming uh, in the next version. So we, we are having some effort to doing here. Geo model. Uh, geo model, uh, we, we decided to set of course, uh, as I said before, there are many different models to uh, describe Earth. Uh, we have some already uh, ha ready available in GeoDesi data, for instance, VGS84, which is used for GPS coordinates. You can use your custom LPCE parameters, or you can even use, uh, use again, entities for which we, uh, there are good maps available. For instance, for Mars or Moon, you can use the very same thing. You can uh, use grid lines, can plot everything. We did a very nice blog post on that for the Apollo moon landings. We can see this very nicely. Often a uh, scale bar is very nice. So you say, uh, what, what scale are we talking about? So you have some sense of scale for your, I think I'm close to the end here. <laughs> okay, I'll hurry up. Uh, primitives, we have a bunch of primitives. Uh, the most uh, geomarker will be, uh, so you can easily annotate maps. We, will, uh, we have an effort again to that we make a, a lot of uh, predefined icons available so, can, so you can easily mark up uh, you, uh, mark your maps. Geopass, 
again, this is a geopath, it's a path on the body. So if you use a normal line between two points, you, you're drilling through the earth. You don't want to do this, you want to use geopath to describe now a path on the body. Since we have different versions like geodesics or loxodromes or rump line, these are used in aviation. If you want to go in a certain direction for a certain distance, then you can easily do that. Uh, we have name paths like Meridian, Parallel, Arctic Circle, Tropic of Cancer, and uh, th again, there are some nice examples in here, which I do not have time at the moment. Uh, Geogroup, uh, you, you are able to, to group primitives, like as you can do in cell group, you have something similar now, and also for geographic, they can group primitives. Geostyling, we have some defined, uh, we defi again, geostyling takes precedence over normal graphics directives. This will be, uh, get some users maybe get used to, but it's, it's very powerful. Uh, the non-uniform geostyling employs texture. In this case, you can really build now layout maps. You can use uh, tooltips on it, mouse over, everything will work nicely. And we have uh, predefined some various uh, geostyles, uh, outline map, the normal street map, street map without label, elevation map, contour map, you can easily do this now. Or you can, as, as Shadi showed, we have, can use very nicely also our powerful image effects. For instance, the charcoal effect, you can easily apply this also for your maps, whatever you can think of. Again, we have very nice documentation on this. We have geolist plot and georegion value plot, for which I don't have time, which are derivative, uh, derivatives of that. And, um, okay, I think uh, two, two short things. I think I have time for that. Um, for instance, you, you think out, say, say you, you have a very nice uh, camera, which has got GPS coordinates, you, you're taking some pictures, and then in the end, you don't download your picture, and you say, oh, where have I taken this? That's an easy way, for instance, you can see we're walking around here in Champagne, or I think it's Urbana, actually, and you can see where the pictures were taken. So you can easily do this. Or you can map your GPS coordinates. Uh, I think uh, Chris showed it in the beginning. So you can easily, again, co connect to the devices. It's all connected devices media, and then you can easily do that. Or you can, uh, again, try to map the Wolfram, uh, again, here, here in Champagne. How, how far are we away? And you can make, uh, these are the different offices we have for the, uh, for our, which are now in our Wolfram family. And uh, as you can see, we're using interpreter here, on which Jeremy will talk to you a little bit more later. And this, uh, I think I have no time for that, but I want to thank our special teams. So we have Jose, Francisco, uh, and, and our whole uh, team in South America. Eric, which helped a lot with the documentation, and Brad and Michael with a lot of ideas, helps, and thank you. <laughs>